So today I'm talking with Rochelle Gorey, the co-founder and CEO of Spring 4. And Spring 4, Rochelle, why don't you tell us about what they do, what you guys do, and, and how you help financial services companies. Thanks, Ben, for having me, and I look forward to talking to you today. So Spring 4, we are a social impact fintech company headquartered in Chicago. And at Spring 4, we believe that when people are experiencing financial challenges, they need and deserve to be directed towards vetted local resources that can help them get back on track with their payments. So we work primarily in the financial services space, helping lenders, banks, uh, online lenders, help their customers get back on track with their payments. And so what services are you providing specifically? So we're a technology platform. We have two products that are utilized by financial services companies. We have a call center tool, which is called S4 Pro. And then we also have our digital solution, S4 Direct, which allows a lender to present Spring 4 on their consumer-facing website so that their borrowers and customers can have access 24-7 to vetted, curated financial health resources. And when I say financial health resources, that means connection to nonprofit and government agencies that are providing assistance in about 25 different service or spending categories. So things like help with food savings, prescription drug costs, employment resources, financial counseling. If you think about a person's household budget and all of the expenses that go into that, we're trying to direct people to vetted, curated organizations that can help them. So your clients are the banks or the, the, the financial services companies, but you also have, I guess, sort of individual customers which are you're sharing with those lenders or those banks? Is that kind of a way to think about it? So we are a B to B to C play, really. So our, you're right, our clients are uh, any organization or company that is wanting to connect either their borrowers or employees to financial health resources. And in turn, their customers are able to connect with those vetted nonprofit and government agencies. So the reason that we started our company was all the way back in 2005, we were seeing, you know, way too many families lose their homes to foreclosure because they didn't know where to turn for help. And at the same time, lenders who have huge portfolios of loans spread across the country, there was no way that they could be the expert about where to safely refer their borrower to for help and assistance. So we wanted to create a technology solution that made that easy and efficient for a lender to be able to do so. And it's particularly important because unfortunately, a lot of unscrupulous actors and scams can come into play when people are behind on their bills. So we knew that there were great organizations out there that could assist people, but people didn't know about them. You know, there's a lot of shame attached with financial challenges. So people weren't reaching out to a trusted source to find that information. We saw ourselves as being able to be that independent trusted source that could reliably direct people to organizations that could get back on track with their payments. So, you know, if you think about it, we really need to address the root cause behind why someone is behind on their challenge. And when we do that, we can get them paying and saving again. So um, it's interesting that you say that because I just, right before this call, was on a call with a bunch of fraud investigators and they were talking about that idea of what you just described, right? They're seeing a lot of fake financial advice sites popping up. And yes, they're, definitely, yes. Yeah, and these sites are convincing people to turn over information about accounts and data and passwords, and so folks are losing things. When you go out to, to choose who you're going to include in your referral, how do you pick, you know, this is a reputable agency, this is a reputable nonprofit? Yeah, that's a great question, and I'm always so excited and pleased to share it because I believe that our approach to who's in our database or the Spring 4 platform is one of our differentiators. So first and foremost, we only list nonprofit or government agencies. Um, so we really want to make certain that people are being directed to those organizations whose mission it is to assist them. 
Secondly, we employ a professional data team that their charge is to curate and vet any organization, again, only nonprofit or government agency in our database. And so we're assessing them according to their track record, their capacity to assist, their funding levels, their reputation. Um, we're doing this um, with a, a team that has a background in community development and nonprofit work. So we're not internet scraping. We're not trying to be the Google. In fact, we believe that when people are under stress, when they are experiencing financial challenges, it's not that helpful to provide someone with an exhaustive list of every organization that provides resources. We want to get people a curated short list so that they can begin to take immediate action. So walk me through, say I'm a, I'm a bank in Chicago, for example, where you guys are based, right? And, sure. and I say, oh, you know, I'm starting to see some stress in my loan portfolio. My, my borrowers are having problems. What would it look like to, to start up something with you guys? How would that look? And, and what might I see in that portfolio, you know, a couple months down the line? So number one is we are super easy to onboard and to work with. You can ask any of our clients. I believe that they are extremely pleased by what we offer and how quickly we can bring our solution uh, to their institution. So because we have no access, to consumer or loan information or data, we have been deemed a low-risk uh, vendor. So that makes uh, the vendor compliance and due diligence process a bit easier. Now we all know that that's usually going to be a lengthy and not easy process, but you know we have been told that we have been the easiest deployment ever by an institution. So really, um, for our professional tool, it's as simple as we assign usernames and passwords to the agents who have access to our tool. Because it's cloud-based, they log into our system. They do zip code searches to be able to provide those vetted referrals to their customers. So uh, we do a 30-minute training, or we take a train-the-trainer approach, and they can begin using it. So typically, our deployments take about 30 days. But as a result of COVID-19 and the huge um, demand for our services, but also as a way for us to assist in this, you know, unprecedented time. We ramped up our tech resources so we could deploy within 15 days, and we are doing that. It's super exciting to be able to bring Spring 4 to an institution quickly. And then our digital solution, same thing, under 15 days. It's really a matter of telling us, working with us, how do you want to brand it? What are the key messages? We certainly share best practices of how we've seen other institutions deploy, but we can get it out there and working for you so fast. And then I think the second part of your question is, what will you see when you onboard Spring 4? Number one, you're gonna surprise and delight your customers because they certainly aren't expecting their bank or their uh, credit card company to provide resources that assist them in their financial difficulty. We're changing the conversations that are occurring at the call center. Um, so we're seeing increased borrower engagement, or I should say the banks are, and our subscribers are seeing increased customer engagement they're seeing, now this takes a couple of months, but they're seeing increases in repayment rates, which is, of course, you know, the ROI to working with us. And we're so pleased and proud that we've been able to show the business impact. And then beyond that, we are good for the brand. Um, you know, certainly right now with what's happening with COVID-19, an organization should be there to help their borrowers in these times. And with Spring 4, we're able to show that empathy, show assistance, and be able to route people together to helpful organizations. And then finally, something that we certainly didn't intend to do when we created Spring 4 is that we're having an impact on the employees that use our tool. So call center agents feel report feeling empowered about their roles now we've changed and shifted the tone of those collection conversations. They say it's making them easier. Um, they're seeing an increase in resolution as a result of utilizing Spring 4. So it truly is a win-win-win, and we're super excited to be able to do that with our partners. So then this isn't a, uh, 
another web page, right? I'm not going to my bank if I'm a borrower in trouble and, and oh, by the way, we have this financial help page you can look at. This is, I call in and say, hey, I'm having problems or the bank calls me maybe and says, yeah. hey, you're, you're behind, do you need some help? Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, for our, our S4 Pro, our call center tool, that is exactly how it works. So if you imagine we're arming those agents with another tool that can really help guide that conversation and make that borrower feel heard. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes it feels like there is not a solution for that person. And maybe there isn't when your call is only about when can I expect that payment. But if you can right. help deliver some reassurance that there are uh, organizations and tools out there that could assist, that borrower feels supported and they feel heard. And while it's only anecdotal, I would love to figure out how we could actually research this, but we feel, and so do our subscribers, that when they are presented with Spring for Referrals, their bill moves to the top of the pile, right? Like, I'm going to feel more inclined to pay you back because you helped me. Right, right. I, I can see where that would be a big difference, right? It, it, it begins to put the bank back into the role of being the trusted advisor as opposed to simply just somebody I owe money to. Um, so obviously, and, and you've already mentioned it, right, it's, we're, we're living in, in a pandemic time. We're seeing lots of people face financial challenges, and, and it's not even strictly the unemployed. It's people losing jobs, but really? also... Yeah. People with less employment, um, people who have more more other kinds of bills as they try to manage through this. Um, what you said, businesses is unfortunately way up. Um, what kinds of things are you seeing, and, and who's who's working with you now? So yeah, we. I'm, hey, I never thought I'd be running a company during a pandemic. And um, But the crazy thing is, is that we are so well suited to assist during this time because we've spent the last 15 years building a product, building up our database, um, increasing our technology so that we were here to help from day one. Um, so when this started happening, I mean, it was easy for our team to see and understand that this was gonna have very dire consequences, not only for consumers, but for portfolios. So um, we got to work right away um, curating additional, what we are calling our COVID-19 resources in um, three categories that we released um, within 10 days of uh, I guess of us going into lockdown. So COVID-19 food, financial and health resources, um, an additional 2,500 resources that are geared specifically to those who are facing um, issues in those areas. And I think from our experience and understanding what are the most frequently accessed resources, we wanted to make sure those were as up to date as possible. So we did that, we had conversations with our subscribers, we moved those um, categories uh, front and center, and then of course I mentioned earlier, we um, uh, decreased our time to deploy. Um, the types of clients that are coming to us are online lenders, um, additional financial institutions, uh, banks, major brands, major financial institutions, top 10 financial institutions who understand that this is the right thing to do. It's a simple thing to do, um, and it makes business sense as well. Um, so that is super exciting. And then we actually launched with our first uh, employer as well, who is positioning Spring4 as a part of their emergency employee grant program, but, you know, top credit card companies, top financial institutions, I'm looking forward to being able to share with you some of those names, but let me just say they're names you recognize, and some of them are, are in your membership. Okay, and so with that, a, a lot of this, um, a lot of the things that we've talked about have been about lending, but when you mention some of the things that you've added, it sounds like you're going beyond just simply helping people find resources to to get 
to get themselves on a more sound financial footing vis-a-vis -vis their lender. Um, can you talk about the kinds of, of things that a, so, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure I say this correctly because it's, they're not a spring for a customer, right? But an individual might indirectly access from spring forward. Does that make sense? Like what are they going to see? What, what would somebody who calls their bank and says, I need help. Oh, okay. What kinds of things might they see from, from what the lender delivers to them? Sure. Well, we have 25 categories available and our clients can customize and choose which of those categories that they would like to present to their borrowers. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we'll recommend what those categories are, but I can tell you right now, the top three categories being accessed most frequently are number one, food, which is really no surprise. We've all seen the news stories. Second, financial counseling and information and third is employment. So, you know, when 30 million people are faced with unemployment, um, that's a huge um, need right now. So it's really, you know, it depends if, if a caller, um, you know, or, or an individual is talking to their, to their bank, if they self identify, what is the reason for their lack of payment? then that agent can look at the list of categories that are available. If the consumer is using the self-service tool on their bank's uh, customer-facing website, they're going to see, um, you know, a couple of questions to help guide them. You know, are you experiencing uh, financial challenges? Are you looking for food savings? Are you looking for employment resources? And then we would direct them to the most local resources in their area that have been vetted by Spring 4. And do you go back out? I mean, we see, especially with so many people needing help now, are are you kind of having to re-vet the nonprofits yeah. that you work with? Yeah. Yeah, and we've always done that, but we've increased our frequency due to the, you know, surging demand. And, you know, things are shifting every day, sometimes hourly. And so we understand that we need to have very up-to-date and accurate information if a financial institution or someone in the lending community is relying on us to assist them. They certainly don't want to provide their borrower with any dead ends. So our team is looking at our resources and vetting them and continually looking at funding levels. Um, on a daily basis now, specifically for those COVID-19 resources because needs are so critical and things are changing so frequently. So we believe that's a huge value add to our clients. There's no way that, you know, anyone could really keep that up to date and accurate. And we've built a back end. So we have um, our proprietary data portal where we keep all of the information and it allows us to um, what we call hide an organization, you know, when the funding is depleted, but we can go back in and refresh it and add them back in as funding resumes. Okay. And do, when you approach those organizations, do they kind of understand who you are and what you're doing and why you have to ask them so many questions? I mean, do they, do they kind of get yeah. it? I mean, it's been wonderful because you know, we've been doing this for 15 years and we've built up a track record and reputation. And, you know, I come from the nonprofit world, from affordable housing, community reinvestment, putting together partnerships between lending institutions and banks. And, you know, a lot of times nonprofits have a very small marketing budget. So they're happy to receive referrals and get people um, coming to them for, uh, services. And then we, another differentiator is we independently, as I mentioned, independently vet and curate those organizations. So spring four, we decide who is in or out of our database and we derive no revenue uh, from listing organizations. And that's really important because it tells our clients and it tells the world that we, um, we are going to independently vet and decide organizations that have the high caliber to be in our database, if that makes sense. Yeah, so then that sort of eliminates pet organizations, I guess, right? And, and to come back to that notion, all of your revenue then comes from the financial service providers. 
Yes, our and, subscribers. They pay us to license our technology and make it available okay. to their consumers. And they do so because we've been able to demonstrate a business case and they know it's good for their brand and image as well. Okay. And the, the, the types of need are expanding and the types of clients you have seem to be pretty broad based, but, but do you think that um, you're going to end up seeing additional, and you've added different kinds of, of support, do you think you're going to see additional types of companies coming back to Spring 4? You mentioned you had an employer. Um, mm -hmm. When we were talking before this interview started, you said that you weren't working with, with say, prepaid companies. Um, mm -hmm. But but do you see, you know, if I'm not a lender, is there value, is there an interface for using Spring 4 because I may or may not be able to see or, or help somebody who is having financial stress? So, I mean, before COVID-19, I believe that there were so many additional use cases for Spring 4. Um, I mentioned an employer because we are seeing a move for or as employers begin to embrace financial health and understand that if they have a financially healthy workforce, it's, you know, same thing. It's good for them. It's good for productivity. It's good for their brand. Um, it makes sense. So we were already excited to be seeing that innovation occur in that space. I do believe that any organization, whether it's for their customers or their employees, um, it makes sense for them to be assisting and helping connect people to local resources. Um, I think what this pandemic has showed us is that this should be a way, in my opinion, a standard operating procedure. Um, you know, if you want to help people get back on track or get financially healthy, how can you do that without understanding what their needs are and helping to address that I've always thought that it's very simple, but you know, maybe it's not sexy enough or um, I'm not certain, but I do know that we are seeing a lot of increased uh, need now for spring four and um, it's the right thing to do. It's the right place to be and it absolutely helps with the bottom line. Um, I think before people, sometimes didn't think it was a big enough priority, but those companies that did and embraced Spring 4 were already in a great position before this happened to help their customers and they'll continue to be able to assist their customers. So I want to get you to talk a little bit about the big picture for a minute, if I can, yeah. before we wrap up. Um, and one of the things that has occurred to me as we've watched this crisis unfold is to the to your point, right, even before this crisis, there were needs for this kind of a resource for people to use. And we saw plenty of articles about people living paycheck to paycheck or they couldn't afford a $400 expense or, you know, people had income volatility, all of these different things. And it is it the case that what the pandemic is doing is showing us the, the, the acute sort of example of what have been a lot of chronic problems. I mean, are we, are we just kind of really not, it's not so much that the pandemic has, has, I want to be careful how I say this. It's not so much that the pandemic has necessarily, um, created a whole it's swath exposed. of new problems. Why right, it's, it's exposed it, is it's what exposed it's done. It. Yeah. And maybe this will end up being the great equalizer, the great leveler, right? Like, there should not be a shame, there should not be shame attached with financial challenges. And I think what the pandemic and this crisis is showing us is that it's much more widespread, and it can be anyone. We're you know, for the vast majority of Americans, what this has shown is we're a day away from a very dire financial emergency. And if you happen to be one of those people that is experiencing a financial difficulty or emergency, why 
shouldn't there be assistance and help out there for you? Shouldn't there be messaging around that for you? Shouldn't it be okay to be directed to organizations, programs, and resources that can help you? I'd like to envision a world where we don't treat people differently if they have a financial challenge, just like we're all a day away from having a pre-existing condition, right? right? We don't know what tomorrow is going to hold, so let's prepare, let's have solutions available, and let's do the right thing. It's good for business, and it's good for your customers. So one other question related to that, one, one final one, which is I, it feels to me like a lot of the problems are communication problems, that resources exist and we either don't know how to talk to people about how to connect them with those resources or how to get them to, to explain the resources they need, or we don't know, when I say we, the industry doesn't necessarily know how to make that connection. And it seems like you're solving that communication sort of problem. I mean, do you think that it, that it really, am I oversimplifying it there or is, is it really not as hard to help people as it might seem? Like you mentioned before, right. like we, we've seen some yeah. struggles. I mean, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I think it is a communication thing, but also, you know, we don't expect a bank to do this on their own. You know, that's what we're here for. That's our expertise. It's not really in their wheelhouse or toolbox, but we can help put that in their toolbox for you, right? So, and then it is, how do you communicate? How do you engage your customer? How do you let them know that you're here to assist and help during troubling times? You can employ a strategy like Spring 4, but I'm not saying the industry has to create their own. And, and why would you? It takes a lot of time and effort and know-how. I mean, we, you know, our leadership team comes from the nonprofit world, so we understand um, that space. And we're, we're doing the hard work for you so that you can make it very easy to insert into your conversations, into your uh, mitigation and your collection strategies so that you can be successful as a lender and as a leader in the financial service industry. Okay. Well, I think that covers most of my questions. Is there anything that we didn't cover that people should know to understand the work that you're doing? Hmm. Um, no, I mean, I guess I would just say one more thing is that last well, not last month, let's see. This, in the month of May, we will have made over 500,000, so half a million referrals in the month of May alone. That tells me that people very much are hurting. They're looking for outside resources to help because they have no other options. Um, so let's figure out a way to direct people to reputable organizations that get them back on track versus, you know, the um, alternative which is people just get more and more stuck and they can't get back on track with their mortgage, auto, or credit card payment. Yeah, I, I think that it, it's, I, I, to avoid cliches, to try to avoid cliches, right, it, the, the recovery is going to be everybody's responsibility and it's going to be helping those customers. It's not just about reopening, but it's about helping people catch up. Right, like what are we going to do when the deferments are over <laughs> and somebody right. is still unemployed? We've got a long road ahead of us. Um, it took us a long time to recover from 2008, and that was not nearly as widespread or significant as what we're undergoing right now. Well, so you started in 2005. You guys went through 2008, 2009. Are there any lessons from that that you saw that we should bring forward? Well, I mean, I think the biggest lesson is let's not wait too long. We, we have solutions in front of us, and not just the Spring 4 solution. There are strategies and innovation and things in place, and I believe the lending industry needs to adopt them at a quicker pace and look to outside organizations, partners that can assist. It's going to be a long haul, and, you know, we're not going to be able to return people to current status without additional resources, 30 million unemployed. If it's probably higher than it was yesterday, 
If yeah. you don't have a job, how are you going to get back on track with your payment? So yeah. I think we all need to work together, and I would like to see that happen quicker than I believe the response was in 2008. Yeah, it's certainly not going to solve itself. No. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much for, for taking some time out and joining me today. And uh, we will keep in touch and, and uh, see if there are, see how things develop and, and see how we might be able to, to spread the word. Thank you so much. It was really great talking with you this afternoon. And if you have any follow-up questions or ideas, I'm open to them. Thank you for having me.